Hey everybody, and it's episode 12 of Hell's Bells. Woo! Where's all my pieces of Google Docs? There they are. Um, so, a uh, little housekeeping this week. This episode and all remaining episodes are now going to be pre-recorded. We've got some schedule conflicts going on for some of the players, so so you guys don't miss out watching. We're going to just pre-record everything and make sure we stream it at the right time each week. Um, also, Holly and Hadil are having a bird emergency right now, so they're not here this week. Uh, but everyone else is still here. And, um, as always, I'm here to take this all tiefling party on a trip around the plains, but not all tieflings are the same anymore. Uh, once again, modern kynons is what we're using for our tiefling variant. So let's go around, see who everyone is playing, what variant they are, and if they, uh, well, what's going on with them at the moment, because we had quite the episode last time. So, um, Kayla, hi. Hi, uh, my name's Kayla, uh, K-A-Y-N-C-L-I on the internets, and I play Pentar, which she is a Circle Forest Druid with Zugged Moy Heritage, which is modified from Mordenkainen's. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and Pentar is just, you know, the worst, but she's trying her best. TK, hi. Oh, we've got TK is stuck. Their internet was playing up. Oh, dear. Um, Sorry, I know. My internet is <laughs> ridiculous. No, I know. My internet's being crazy. It always is. Um, but TK playing Gil, they, them pronouns. Uh, gonna play my, my tiefling paladin who's having a hard time. Oh, poor boy. What ancestry does he have? I'm so sorry. Uh, Zariel tiefling. Which is also from Modern Kynons. Yep. Chloe, hey. Hey, uh, it's me, Chloe. Uh, she, her. And I am playing Lyra, an Oath of the Ancients paladin. She's currently uh, still a little uh, whiplashed from last time uh, being mazed. Uh, but other than that, she's hanging in. <laughs> I'm Lisa Chen. I am playing Mercy, who is a changeling tiefling uh, swapped with a baby in Ravenloft, and now she's in Sigil. Uh, she is also still um, a little completely 100% emotionally wrecked. Uh, after the last episode, when she faced uh, her uh, changeling sister, the human sister that she was swapped with. Ooh, drama. So... The multiverse is an infinite place. All manner of planes and demi-planes exist in a cosmology known as the Great Wheel. Our tale is woven in the Outer Planes, a circle of 16 named planes which arc around a central hub known as the Outlands. In the centre of this impossibly tall spire... I oh, sorry. In the centre of this hub is an impossibly tall spire, above which floats the donut-shaped city of Sigil, which is where our party has um, a house, or kip, in the planar cant. And they have just stepped back into their kit from a strange hut which contained a very large library which couldn't possibly have fit inside. So, take it away. I just imagine, like, Lyra, like, holding, like, Levity's letters and stuff and, like, going over them again and again. And, like, setting them down and, like, being like, well, um... Oh, and like she'll just like kind of start to shake and she'll like go in her bag and reach out her bag and she'll be like, um, does anyone want a candy? Candy? <laughs> anyone? Um, and she'll like try to like brush over the information just by like making sure everyone's comfortable. Um, Mercy is probably just sitting by the kitchen counter where the letters were standing next or sitting next to Lyra, but she's just kind of staring into space and she just has her hand open and like, I don't know, maybe Lyra is like just piling candies in it every yeah. once in a while and she's just staring. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the, like the fifth candy, she'll like notice that you're staring. You know, and then being like, oh, concerned. Well, Pintar will just start picking the candies out of Mercy's hand and eating them. <laughs> <laughs> just take them piece by piece and eat them. That's awesome. Lyra's happy that you like them. <laughs> oh, well, P then P now Pintar hisses and runs to the corner because she oh, does no. that. She's <laughs> like, don't! Do not! 
don't acknowledge oh, also no. she she can't read so she has no idea what those letters say she's just like why is everybody sad i don't know um eventually uh mercy will will come to realize there's centipede slobber all over her hand <laughs> or maybe you're are you still a centipede <clears throat> uh yeah now now she is <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's centipede slobber all over her hand so she'll kind of press to digitate that um and she has uh, gill's ring still on the tip of her tail so she'll kind of flick her tail around um and kind of hold the ring up to gill and um just say thank you um gill hasn't really acknowledged the presence of the letters he I assume that somebody read at least one of them out loud and now he realizes they're all from levity and have gotten incredibly uh, kind of heartbreaking towards the towards the end of them. And is, by that time... Is Gil like, who's levity? Where's Yates? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Gil did acknowledge uh, Yates as levity when he got attacked by the Lady of Pain. So, like, he does know all their names. He's just insufferable. <laughs> But um yeah, he'll he'll get to kind of the ends of the letters and he's like, Okay, I mean this is uh this is a letter of resignation and that's that's fine. And when uh and when Mercy offers uh one of his wedding wedding rings back, um the one that he shares with Demetrius, he will uh think on it for money. He'll it's yours now, just just keep it. Uh, <laughs> um, Marissa will just kind of nod. She's still trying to deal with having seen her human sister die, or maybe, maybe it was all totally made up. Um, and she'll just kind of look around at all of the dust uh, all over the place. Um, how long were we gone? And I'll just start sweeping. Yeah, that is a good question. You're not sure how long you were gone. What was the last um, letter? Like, did Levity date any of the letters? Um, I don't think she necessarily dated them, but you mm -hmm. can definitely tell that the sort of time is passing as she's like, yesterday I wrote this, or last week. I wrote you last week, uh but you're still not back sort of thing. <clears throat> well, uh, Pentar is like, I'll figure it out, and goes down into the basement to see how decayed anything she left is. Oh, wow. Um, nature. Check for me. Okay. 13. You're not sure you think stuff has been decayed at least a month? I don't I guess I guess Pintar knows what a month is. She just comes back up the stairs and she's like it's been se it's been several time. It's been it's been a little while. Not too too much time, but but a significant a decent amount of time. Thanks, uh, Pintar. You're welcome. <laughs> In that case, Gil will um, kind of immediately stand up and say, uh, "I have, I have a report to make. I have to go," and he'll start to leave. Pintar is a little distressed at this and actually like bolts after him because she had to go through that whole scenario where she thought people were trapped or lost, and she's just like. Where are you going? I have to go to work. I have reports to make. You don't have a job. Mm, you don't have a job. Uh, I have the most important job, bringing decay to the masses, but you don't do anything. You're just a pretty boy. You live, you live upstairs. Where are you going? I, I'm going to the place that I've been for months. Okay, can I come with you? No. I'm coming with you. No. And she just stands there waiting for you to walk. He he actually like will walk like kind of like this gangly 
18 year old will like take a step just to see if she follows yeah she follows she she wild shapes back into she had she was a human at that point because she was talking um or a tiefling and she wild shapes into a cranium rat and like crawls up on your shoulder ew he will immediately take the cranium rat off of his shoulder and set it on top of a bookcase she's too wily she's too wily yeah have you ever seen a rat just jump crawl around she's just like running around your body she refuses she's like i'm coming with you i mean fight me (laughs) mercy is just gonna stand in the doorway watching a rat crawl all over gil yeah he's like like i'm tk's like fight me but gil is definitely screaming (laughs) gil is definitely like "Ah!" lyra what is gil doing we were just gone for a month we went through this really traumatic experience i don't think we should all be separated right now i think we should all i I agree I, i think we should all maybe stay together and like she's like i just imagine she's like watching like intently just like gil like trying to like get this rat off and she's like, but maybe, maybe he stands. Oh, no, wait, there's, the oh, but okay. And then uh, she'll kind of walk up to them and be like, are you, are you guys okay? Do you, we, I think we should stick together. Mercy and I think what we should, right now is, it's a good time to all kind of talk it out and, and stick around. I, I have reports to make. You can stick together. I will be right back. Uh, and Mercy will call from inside the house, Gil, Pentar, we'll be right there. And she's just writing a note for Levity in case Levity comes back um, to leave on the kitchen counter for her. Where is, uh, is, is Mika with us during all of this? Or mm-hmm. did Mika run off to a gutter? Oh! oh. I wonder where he is. <laughs> Probably lost in pandemonium. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, fine, then I guess... Oh, I just Gil- realized I was muted. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I should probably say that for everyone who's going to go, Ah, you're muted in chat. Um, Mega's run off to find her lost, slard baby Bjorn. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess Gil will allow them to follow him then. Since he doesn't have a choice now that there's a cranium rat hiding underneath his armor. Yep. Probably All up in there. Biting him in his armpit every For time. For sure. Like licking his armpit. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Gil, I'm confused. You've had a job this whole time. You can do things. I can do so many things. <laughs> Not the dishes, Gil. Can you do the dishes? Can you do the dishes? What do I pay you for? You do. Mercy will quietly count to ten. Yeah, my job isn't doing the dishes, Maid Yates. Uh, <laughs> what did you just call me? He's like walking faster. <laughs> <laughs> Using his extraordinarily long legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess he'll go um, go to make a report about like uh, because he owes a report over the last mission they gave him. Like, he hasn't been back in Sigil since they rescued that Modron. Mm. Also, where is the Modron? Where is Chastity? Oh my gosh. It's all, all gone. All gone. <laughs> it's like a rogue Modron. Chastity's <laughs> gone. Yeah, so so Gil will be uh, heading back towards... Does he go to the Hall of Justice? Um, is that where it needs to go? It's over in the ladies' ward. Um, oh. It is. Is it the the armory that they're in? The prison. Sorry, the prison. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll he'll head that way wherever he knows that he needs to make a report. Yeah, the headquarters uh, is yeah it's in the ladies' ward. It's called the prison, and it's just like this stone building and. It's covered in spikes. It's just just a mass of this dark grim stone and spikes. It's not very welcoming and every so often every so often you hear this like wail from within. Yeah. Pintar like does she did we establish if she has telepathy as a cranium rat? Because I I play another game as a cranium rat and I'm getting confused. So, does she does she have telepathy when she's in cranium rat form? She's connected to the other rats, I believe. 
Okay, but not, she can't, like, telepathically talk to you, anybody else? No. Um, um, oh, actually, I don't know. Um, Cranium well, she'll just... Doing bolos, aren't they? She'll just gesture up at the spikes and, like, nod approvingly to, to convey that she really likes this building and the screaming. This is, this building fits her goth yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, it's my aesthetic. Thank you for bringing nice. me here. I love it. Uh, cranium rats can read thoughts. They can communicate hunger, fear, and other base emotions. So you could probably communicate that you approve. Yeah, that's that's my aesthetic is a base emotion. So that's what's yeah. being communicated. <laughs> base emotion. Just like the glee that a child gets when they walk into a Halloween store. A child and or Lisa. <laughs> I saw your eyes light up, Lisa. You were like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just, um, like, home for mercy. Is there, like, can Gil just, like, is there a guard at the door? Or Gil just walks up and, like, hits the doorbell? Uh, there's, like, a guard at the gate. Um, nice. But he, Gil's wearing his uniform, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so the guard will sort of, like, give him a nod and um, he can go through. Gil's gonna give class? that. Oh. Well, I'm hiding in his armor, so. Gil will definitely give the nod of, like, somebody who's just allowed to be in the club by accident. Mm. And so he's kind of like, hey. <laughs> that one, like, college kid who's, like, super full of himself. Whatever happens to Lyra and Mercy, Gil doesn't look behind him to check. So are they allowed in? Uh, I think the gate guard would assume that, um... You're taking it in for some reasons of justice. You know what you're doing. You look like you know what you're doing, so. Sure do. <laughs> really? <laughs> I sure do. Look. They employed like him. <laughs> yeah, my 16 charisma says that I know what I'm doing. Mercy will just hold up her tail and say, I think we're married. We're with him. Oh. Lyra just waves. He's <laughs> like, like. Sister wives. You can't see the guard's face because um, it has a helmet on, but you're pretty sure he'd be pulling a face if you could see it. <laughs> just like, hi. This is just giving them the grand tour. Um, <laughs> so once once Gills gets inside, is there a, are there officers' uh, quarters and offices and things like that? Yeah, yeah. And um, has he gone? He's gone. He's done jobs for them before, so he knows who to report to, right? Yeah, yeah. He's got a specific commanding officer to go to. Very nice. Um, so he will he will go in that direction. And um, I guess once he gets outside that person's office, he'll turn around and look at Mercy and Larry. He'll wait outside, <laughs> but he'll like be very like important, like very self important about it. He'll be like. I'll take care of this. Just wait outside. Um, so while you're waiting outside, every so often you hear like a sort of like ah from down deep in the building somewhere. Um, and Gil, you can go in and you make your report, and mm -hmm. they take that report and they give immediately give you a new missive. Mm -hmm. which I believe I and I have that missive. Yeah, I have it with me. And um, in that case, uh, Gil will Gil will leave after the report and everything, and uh, and be secretly very pleased that Pentar didn't say or do anything to embarrass him, even though she like curled up under his armpit, so he had like one shoulder like up. It was like afraid to like set it. Down. He had to like set it on like his sword hilt. Oh, is he like styling it out by sort of yeah? His arms? He's just like with his cape over it because she's like sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's just like, well, enjoy the smell of the inside of that armor. By the way, he's oh, an eighteen-year-old she... teenage boy, so she loves it. No, <laughs> <laughs> he lives there now. I hate that. <laughs> Yeah, he'll come out and um and like fold up the missive and like put it in his pouch and oh, okay, we can go. Okay, so you can make your way back wherever you wish. Mhm. Mm he um yeah, he'll he'll head back to the kip cuz he'll want to at least take a bath before going on the next mission. Okay. But... Good. 
are you guys coming or? Yep, 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 yep. Oh. We'll go back home. I I'll don't go know. back home at least. <laughs> I'll follow suit and just wave again at the guard as we walk past again. <laughs> <laughs> give him, give him a candy. Just plop one in his hand. <laughs> yeah. Can you do like perception as you wave at him? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me see. All right, so that is a 17. You're not sure, but you think you see him sort of like lift two fingers slightly and then put them back down as you wait. Aww. <laughs> Aww. So it's nice. probably like the most positive interaction he's had all day. Aww. Yeah, and it's like, you put the can in his hand and he's just sort of like standing there looking at it. And again, you can't see the face, but you, you're sure that under the mask is a very confused look. <laughs> I'm still happy I made him happy in somewhat, in some sense. <laughs> I feel like, uh, side note, I would like to know where Lyra is getting all this candy because Sigil does not seem like a candy type of place. I don't well, know. In, in her bag, it's a bag of holding, so she can like put as much stuff as she wants. I know, she, well, she did get the, if it's the, I'm assuming they're like the blue candies that she gave you like a few episodes back, I think with like the gold flecks and stuff in it. Um, and she bought those in Waterdeep before she came to Sigil. Are the rest, so. is the rest like discount Halloween candy? Like she, she intelligently stocked up like a good mom. Like <laughs> it's just a ton yeah. of pumpkin shaped candy corn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She saw that they were going to go on sale. So she's like, I'm just going to get like three jars of these. Just stuff them in her bag. <laughs> Every yeah. time she goes to the Sigil bank, she takes like a handful of the, the strawberry grandma candies. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. back> <laughs> Fun fact, that's, that's what I do in, like, reality. Yeah, you see that disparagingly, <laughs> but those strawberry candies are the best. They're, yeah, they're super they're good. good. Yeah. But if I don't call them strawberry grandma candy, nobody who's watching this is going to know what kind of candy you're talking about. Now that's I'm true. mad because we don't get candy at our banks. We just oh. get overdraft charges. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so anyway, you're back at the kit. Uh, is there anything else that anyone wants to do before you take your long rest and the next day dawns? Nah. Uh, I think if Gil, Gil is still has taken over her part of the bedroom, so Mercy will just go up and check out Levity's side of the room and like levitate and just curl up into a little ball on Levity's bed. Yeah, it's very... Um bear in that corner now all her personal effects are gone and it's probably quite quite sad to look at really that she's not there anymore because there was a lot of colour in that corner of the room levity liked to just sort of decorate her area with all different things mm. and it's there's not the joy that there once was in that corner mm. but anyway You'll get your long rest. Um, Gil, are you telling everyone that you have a mission? Yeah, Gil will actually immediately, like, once everybody wakes up in the morning, he'll, he'll do, like, a good news, everyone, and, like, pull out the mission. We have a mission. Oh, is this like a, in Futurama where, like, the professor goes, good news, everybody? 100%. Because they all, like, Gil still thinks they all work for him, so any mission he has is their mission. Planet Express, go. It's terrible. He's the worst. Um, and he will, um, he'll pull up his, his little missive, and it's, it's very, um, it's it's kind of gross. It's definitely uh well not gross. Let's say rustic. Um the blood stains are also rustic. It's hard to see on the phone. Uh but it's it says um the objective is to retrieve Schemo Narborg, is that correct? A halfling from Gall Gallows Home Carcery. Schemo is an innocent Oh, wait, no, never mind. You don't hear that part. He doesn't read that part out loud. In fact, he goes like this. Justice as its portal to carcery is in the abandoned store. And that's like all he says. Like, he's just like, like skipping mercy killer parts that he doesn't think they should know about. Um, He's like, we have to rescue him. 
we were why like, yeah yeah she'll like, <laughs> like oh <laughs> it's um, our job mm, i don't have a job mm, i thought you had the most important job what's what job would that be rescuing innocence mm, we're, that's i'm not the right person for you to be pitching that to. <laughs> we're heroes mm, maybe you are well i get get any dead bodies out of this that's like the nicest thing pentar has ever said to gil uh, she doesn't think it's nice <laughs> gil like immediately lights up he's like maybe i am a hero Oh, or believes in me. Yeah, she was meaning it as an insult, but that's really nice. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's like, really excited now. <laughs> she's like, Am I gonna get any dead bodies out of this? Well, we're going to a prison, so mm, okay, I'll come. Does Gil know where Carcery is? He wasn't very oh. good at a Bible school, so um, well, actually, the Mercy Killers may have taught him about it. A little, oh. and it is a prison plane. Thank um, goodness. It's one of the uh, evil planes, and once they um, people are captured by the Mercy Killers, then tried by um, one of the other factions. Is it the Harmonium? I'm trying to look at the Harmonium thing. But anyway, it's the Governors, the Mercy Killers, and the Harmonium form this triumvirate, and they dispense justice in Sigil. And when sometimes there are prisoners that are so bad that they can't be kept um, in a prison in Sigil or something like that, and they get sent to this uh, plane, Carcero, and it's known as the prison plane because it's very hard to get out of again. Nice. Uh, Gil will like kneel down next to Pentar and like look her in the face and say, "Did you like the prison we went to yesterday?" You want to go to another one? Mm-hmm. She, she like, people? she's she's already wild shaped into a centipede and like curled yeah. around your head. She's yeah. like, like, like she does dirge. She's like on your head now. Like she's Mercy like, is going to come up and start like unwinding Pentar from Gil. <laughs> Gil, stop manipulating. Gil Pentar. is like throwing up in the back of his mouth. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> um, stop manipulating Pentar. Why is this person in this prison plane, and why do we need to save them if they belong there? Uh, number one, injustice. Number two, justice. Gil, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> and Gil, like, does the math in his head, and he's like... The math lady? <laughs> he's like, no, that... Because number one, injustice, and number number two, justice. Pentar yeah. as a centipede is like nodding and waving her arms. Pentar like, thinks like, so. Hey, I'm justice. like holding this centipede and its legs are like wriggling all over. <laughs> yes. <I'm> like, justice! <laughs> yeah, justice! <laughs> oh, justice mandible. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some strange, like, supervillain justice mandibles. <laughs> <laughs> and and Gil will look at Lyra's. Lyra likes justice, and and she'll kind of be like, I, I do I do like justice. I mean, okay, everybody, think... raise your hand if you like justice. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, but... well, we have to go. <laughs> you ra you raised your hand. We have to go. Does the halfling not belong there, Gil? Lyra will kind of look concerned as soon as like. Mercy says that and be like, "Ooh, are we like breaking someone out of prison? Because I feel like that's not the best thing in the world. Well, we it's be not breaking people out of prison if the people who run the prison tell you to do it, right? She'll like turn to Mercy and be like, Maybe. that's kind of like, okay, so, and he like sets up some cups <laughs> on the table and he's like, okay, so say you forgot your coin purse at the kip and you told dirge to go get your coin purse because it was Sorry. on accident i just feel and like you it... went like and you told dirge 
Dirge, which like now he has like all your names written down instead of the Yates ones. So he doesn't like, actually parts. know. Like he's like, uh, which one is that? <laughs> and you told her to to get the coin purse, but that's not stealing because you told her to. Mercy is going to think really hard. She's not actually super smart. Um, no. so she'll, she'll, she'll just be like, well, okay, I guess. And I do like justice. And Pentar seems really excited about it, I say, as I still hold this, like, wriggling <laughs> pen to feed. <laughs> and we do need to like... pick me up. We need to pick me up from yesterday. Mm-hmm. Slash the mm-hmm. last month. <laughs> it's true. No, I just pat Mercy on the shoulder and be like, just just think of it as, you know, we're helping someone. And, and Gil has never, ever really strayed us wrong ever before, right? And she'll, like, pat you on the shoulder. Mercy looks really concerned as she's being pat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when was the last time I ever lied to you in this room? <laughs> I'll give you 100 gold. In this room, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> and Tara's like kissing, <laughs> like, let's go. You're yes. excited. Okay. I will re- replace the pentapede on Gil. Oh, uh, she like immediately oh. like wraps around his neck twice and has her little head and the claws on, on top of his head. Oh, like, no. oh. No. Gil City, he's like, I'm the winner. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually perfect because as they're uh, if he leads them to the store the portal key is the nervous sweat of a sentient creature <laughs> it says in the missive I was just about to oh. ask what you were going to use. <laughs> he'll just like <laughs> gently dab his forehead with his like and he has like a beautifully monogrammed like silk <laughs> handkerchief and then just like squeeze it out a little bit at the store <laughs> He's just like, no, oh, I hate it. (laughs) He walks like stiff legged the whole time with his shoulders up. He's just like, no, 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 no. Does Pentope drool? Oh, totally. Like, constantly, an endless stream of sort of poisonous drool, probably. So don't eat it, don't let it get in your mouth. It's definitely yeah, don't, don't eat the centipede drool, Gil. Uh, don't I do know that. you were going to, so it's a really a, it's it's a really appealing, like bright green color. So I know oh. you want to eat it, but just don't. Appealing no. is an adjective. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not the one I would choose, but <laughs> that was a choice, yes. Uh, yeah, so he'll wring out his, his beautifully monogrammed handkerchief at the store whenever they get to it. Okay, so, um, the familiar sort of noise and sight of a portal appearing happens. And you all step through this portal, and you are greeted by a rotting, rotting fetid swamp. Pentar, you're delighted by this place. Mm, I have immediate regrets. You are standing on one of the few spots of dry ground that you can see, and there are muddy streams and what looks to be quicksand flowing sluggishly over the foul landscape. Um, it's not obvious at first, given how gross this place is, but on closer look, it's clear that this area has been ravaged, as though some uncaring army has just passed through it. Uh, there are pale grey trees lying toppled and trampled. And you can actually see, if you look around, there are water-filled footprints. And as you look at them, you realise they're Modron footprints. Still, this place is disgusting. Why have you brought us here? For 100 gold. That's barely going to cover the laundry bill. Don't you have a cloak of gleaming? Yes, but everything else, Gil, needs to be dry clean. <laughs> Can't you levitate? I can. How long can I levitate? Let's see. <laughs> I can only levitate for ten minutes. <laughs> um, it's I would too like bad to try to take Pentapede's place 
and no. we're like climbing onto Gil's back. <laughs> yeah, the uh, pentapede has been is like heck hecky yeah, and like jumped off and is running around in the, in the, on the ground like rolling around like a dog. I just Remember imagine that? like. Oh, sorry. I just imagine, like, Pentapede just, like, jumping off of Gil's head, like, like, with arms, like, all the legs. <laughs> all the legs! <laughs> <running> <laughs> the Makes a swamp angel. Yeah, yeah. So I know Pentapede can't talk, but I will absolutely let you go, wee, as you jump. <laughs> wee! Well, it's more, it's like a scree, so it's like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> That's Gil's- cute. Yeah, Gil will summon his uh, summon his steed, yeah, so he doesn't will, have to walk through this. I will piggyback on Gil, and then when the steed oh, oh it's just the llama, it can't carry me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the Neither llama. Gil. It's it's a large creature; it'll carry two. Also, people. Also, aren't your feet still dragging? Because that llama is look very tall. Look what. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I like to imagine his like big po- poochy tummy is like skimming the nasty water. Ew. <laughs> he's, he's really grumpy to be there. He tries to eat all the mushrooms. Feels like, like pacha. No. Yeah, I'd like to ride behind you if there's room, but I'm like holding my hooves up so they don't touch the water, and I'm like holding my tail. You can ride behind me, but since we both have like goat legs, you might have to like face the back. Okay. So, right. like, our legs I will don't do that more ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> Gil insists on not sitting on his cape too, so he's gonna drape his cape, like the bottom of the cape, over your head, so he doesn't have to like sit on it. Sit up, so I can look and make sure we don't get splish splashed. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. So, something else that the Messy Killers have taught you about Carceride Gil is that it is made of orbs. It's really hard to visualise. It took me a few goes to get this in my head. So, it's like this plane is like a string of beads, like a necklace of beads. But it's also layers, so you go down into each bead. So, the top layer, each sort of bead of the plane, each piece of land, there is a gap of a few miles between each one. So you're on an orb, there's other orbs in other directions, um, but there's layers to the plane. If you go down to the next layer, then there's more of a gap between the orbs because um, they're within each other. It's quite a head twister to visualise. Um, so you know that to get anywhere you need to get from one orb to the next and so as you wander around on your on on panza on your llama um you see that there is a small grouping um by some dark black water and there are are two figures and they look like uh, this i can't get the page up hang on so they're kind of like got like capes and they're holding ah, sticks. Spooky. Spooky boys. One of them is standing by a boat on this dark black river. And the other next to this other one is like a, a large basket. And above it is a huge inflated um, ball made of various skins. That sounds horrible, but also really... Like, TK loves it, and Gil loves it less. Entar loves it a lot. She's Gil. just like... She's like... I assume when we leave, she's, she's just gonna stay. She's like, bye, I live here now. <laughs> these are my new parents. Yeah, these are my new... This is my new family. <laughs> bye! Mercy just... Well, I'm kind of turned to the back, so I don't actually know if I see them. Gil definitely points it out, though. Like, like a kid at a haunted house. Mercy only notices that they have boats, um, and she's just kind of, kind of wave them down, like ooh, ooh, because uh, that seems better than being on a llama. Rude. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll mediates. Yes, wave them, wave them. <laughs> yes, please. 
Use your hand. Mine is tired. It's Mercy, it and I'm going to, like, flip your cloak over my head so it flips over onto your face. No, not my horn caps. <laughs> um, so these figures sort of turn towards you as you ride up, and they're like, ah, oh, looking to travel. And uh, they they look kind of corpse-like. Their skin is stretched taut over their skulls. And like, you know when the lips recede and their teeth are all exposed? Laura is very concerned that they are not eating enough food and that she needs to give them food or something. <laughs> like, she's just like, have they eaten? When was the last time they ate? I, I, is Lyra offering the Meranoloth a Capri Sun? <laughs> Potentially, yeah. She'll, like, dig in her bag and, like, pull out, like, one of her extra, like, five water skins and, like, offer it to them. A little bag of vanilla ripe wafers and some orange slices. Yep. Aww. Gotta stay nutritious <laughs> in, in the weird planal area or whatever. Pentar well, is, like, in love with these people and crawls up on one of them <laughs> and, like, centipede or dog whatever sniffs them like a dog whatever a centipede would do just like checking them out like the antenna yeah yeah thank in you in their mouth in their mouth like <laughs> and like tasting them and stuff um so they will explain to you that they are able to transport you to where you need to go um the marana lots are sort of the boat the ferrymen here Oh, okay. And you have a choice. You may take the boat on the River Styx. However, you are warned that one touch of the waters and you will literally lose your minds as all your memories will be wiped. I will say that for like a really long length of time, I was considering wild shaping into an alligator and getting in the river. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like... Ooh, okay. Gotcha. 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 It's a little bathroom. manageable. <laughs> My bad. That was almost tragic. Your other option Ooh. is to take the balloon, which is clearly made of humanoid skins, and that will fly between the voids, between the spheres of Carceri. But again, it will take you to where you need to go. Mercy uh, will point out the balloon. That looks yeah. like uh, the least fuss, the least mess. Um, much drier than the llama or the boat, so I vote for that. She seems completely unbothered that it's skin. Does it look safe? Like, does it look like a safe structure to fly, like, to use, like, the balloon? Like... Oh, insight. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Twelve. Uh, it probably wouldn't be your first choice, but given your second choice is a boat on a river that's going to wipe your memory if you touch the water, it's probably a good bet. Mm. I mean, the, the the it seems to be sort of like the balloon seems to be bobbing quite happily up and down, and the rope seems sturdy enough. It looks cheery enough for Lyra to put her faith into it. <laughs> It depends on your definition of cheery. Oh. It's, I think uh, it's cheery. Yeah, it's sort of like TK and Lisa cheery. Halloween. <laughs> terrifying cheery. Or she's already, like, patting Panza on the bum bum, trying to get him to, like, steer him over towards the, the balloon so she doesn't have to get him over and walk. Some of the it. balloon is, like, made of face skin. So it's, like, Ooh. one of the faces is, like, a smiling face. Oh, and it, like, sure. turns and, like, starts to smile towards... Which one, which one is the least expensive option? Um, they both cost the same. Oh, well, uh, fine. <laughs> I guess we'll go to McDonald's. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we have food at home, but okay. <laughs> I would like a single black coffee, please. <laughs> Gil only puts the llama on the balloon. <laughs> yeah, we'll take the balloon, I guess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had I mean, a great childhood, but okay. Gil's got plenty of coin, hasn't he? Look, I mean, define uh, look. plenty. It's probably going to cost you about... Maybe 
One fifty gold apiece. Uh, oh no! Oh <laughs> no! Oh please! Could you? Okay, look. I know you said you didn't want to be an alligator, but do you want to be an alligator with no memory of having grown up in a cult? Fair point. She turns into an alligator and starts moving, I running towards the river. Centaur's <laughs> tail, and I yell at him, "Stop manipulating Centaur!" <laughs> <laughs> the Morenonoth will hiss and not only will the cult be gone but also her memory of her skills she will think she is an alligator until she turns back Pinter's like Meh, and then keeps moving towards the river yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of win-win because either way I don't have to pay for her so <laughs> no we'll take her in the balloon I guess can we like tie Panza and Pentaligator like underneath the balloon so they like dangle. <laughs> Cute. Yes. <laughs> also, I feel like Panza would be terrified. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get like realistically, I guess we could like <laughs> unsummon him and then summon him back in a That's different form. That's what I was form. thinking, but, uh... but Gil is not gonna do it. He likes his llama. <laughs> He's I'm a <laughs> He is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll pay for them, I guess. So when you say a piece, you mean like each person they can see? Uh, each person that goes in the basket. If you want to tie um, luggage underneath, that will be about 50 gold an item. Okay. Um, so pens are you can do for 50. Deal. Yeah. Pentar isn't a person. Pentar is a cranium rat. Hiding in my armor. If oh. Pentar's as a rat, then you could get away with smuggling her on, I would have thought. You'd have yes. to convince her. alligator right now, though. Yeah, you'd have to convince her. Do you want to go in a cool prison? Oh, you've convinced her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, bet there'll be a, I'll bet there'll be a head on a spike. You uh, see that? She, like, turns into a cranium rat and runs up in your yeah. clothes and bites your armpit. No! Immediate <laughs> regret. Curse this charming disposition. Curse my beautiful face and my charm. My ability to make a woman do whatever I want. She bites harder. Oh no! Love bite. <laughs> You're just making this work. I want a refund on this harem. <laughs> He says all of that. Oh my <laughs> god. Hi, oh Gil, under the basket. He's the worst. <laughs> Lyra, please smack him. Do you... <laughs> Lyra's just like, what? Okay, oh my god. Okay, well, no harems. And, like, and she'll like kind of like usher everybody towards the balloon and kind of like just shake her head and just be like, well, we're gonna... We're gonna do this regardless, and I really don't want to lose my memories. So, I guess let's uh, let's. And she'll look up at the balloon. She'll be like, "Let's let's trust this." And she'll be like, "But no harems on the balloon." <laughs> she'll like Fine. just keep everybody on. None of you are making a suitable wife at this rate, anyway. <laughs> Lyra will be like, "I'm engaged anyway." <laughs> <laughs> and yet you were still a little bit offended. Like you still like I can't believe Gil doesn't want me. No, it's fine. I know what's in your heart. <laughs> she'll kind of look and she'll be like, never mind, let's go. Uh... <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. So I guess Gil will pay for everyone to get on the boat. You have all our money, Gil. <laughs> well, not not all True. of it. You have a hundred gold oh, that I, I haven't given damn. you yet. No, oh. <laughs> I was I was gonna try and give you like a coin a day, but obviously that wasn't the case. So yeah, how much is? Okay. I add per person <laughs> math. Oh, uh. <laughs> four. Do we need to get that fan out again with the math lady Gil? Please. I think it's like, <laughs> think it's like oh. 600 gold, probably. Right? It, 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 it is, it is. It? Yes, because of the 50. <laughs> yes. Because 4 times 50 is 200. Ah, oh, but so you're not paying for Pentar. <gasps> yes, you're right. 
but you are paying for Panzer hanging underneath. Panzer has now been unsummoned. Oh, okay. <laughs> he <just> disappears. <laughs> then it's 4.50. Excellent. Perfect. So, 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 um, you climb into this basket. It's very difficult to do gracefully. So if you wish to climb in a more graceful manner, please say. I'm thinking about Mercy levitating in. <laughs> oh, no. I was, like, before Panza got unsummoned, Mercy, like, kind of, like, tried to get him to line up with the basket. And then I stand on him, and then I, like, tumble into the basket. Yes. Like, my dress falls, like, inside out on top of me. So you all, um, sorry. No, I was going to say before Mercy corrects herself, Gil gets in muddy shoes first, or muddy hooves first. <laughs> so now the inside of Mercy's dress has mud on it. Push Gil out of the basket. <laughs> Strength <laughs> contest. <laughs> Strength contest. Can we actually do that? <laughs> yeah. Because yes, I rolled a yes. 19. Oh my minus, god. Minus one is 18. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, thank you. Oh, I got a 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I had to, I like rolled an 18 on the dice. I was like, no, don't. <laughs> don't let this happen. Mercy just kind of shoves him. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah, you don't go out, you just sort of like fall against the side of the basket. You you don't know where Mercy got this strength from. Yeah, it's like really impressive. You it's made her saying. dress dirty, she's mad. <gasps> I'm like on the floor of the basket, prestidigitating each hoof print off while glaring at you. You missed a spot. <laughs> where? <laughs> oh my god, he's the worst. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you all climb, eventually all climb into the basket, and the uh, Marinoloth uh, makes its preparations, and it slowly starts to just like wobble up into the air, and then the winds between the orbs blow the basket across the void, and it is just a complete void. There is nothing around you at all, it's blackness. Uh, and the orb behind you just gets smaller and smaller as it's slowly receding. Mm. Lyra is very uncomfortable by this. She's like staring out into the blackness and she just kind of like shakes her head and goes to like look down or like look somewhere else. Mercy will just um, use one of her cantrips to make a little ball of light. And she'll just hold and she'll go and sit next to Lyra so we have a little ball of light. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pintar sees that and runs over and perches on Mercy's shoulder and makes her brain glow because that's a thing cranium rats can do. What? She Whoa. makes a little glowing that's brain. So <laughs> that's so that's cool. cool. I love it. <laughs> a little brain light. I feel like Lyra would like go down to like Pintar's level and just like look at it and like be like really amused by it and just be like, this is really cool. <laughs> she tries to smack you on the nose menacingly, but it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. The little hand, like oh, <laughs> Lyra, like takes this not as like a like a like a full like she takes it as a compliment. She like goes back like this. <laughs> she, <laughs> she just doesn't understand that like Pentar is like mad, and she'll just be like, "Oh yeah, it is cool." <laughs> um, so the balloons sort of like traveling along, and you all you can hear is the um howling of the winds between the orbs pushing you through the void but then one of the winds starts to howl slightly differently and if any of you care to look out of the um, basket you can see a creature starting to form as the winds sort of swirl in like a um, whirlwind shape and it just starts to build up into a creature shape. Um, what Ooh. sort of creature? A creature made of air. Um, mm. I will ask uh, our pilot, what's that? Ah, uh, looks like one of the elementals. 
I kind of go like this over the edge of the basket. Do we need to be worried about it? I don't know. I would be on your guard in case. I feel like we weren't properly warned about all of the dangers of taking this balloon ride. I also feel like the pilot should know the danger level of something like this. <laughs> yeah. Andar wouldn't say that, but Kayla is saying Mercy's <laughs> little light that she made kind of dims and disappears as she starts to think about other spells she might need to cast. I mean, normally they're fine, but uh, depends if you've upset anyone lately, doesn't it? you upset anyone? I ask little Cranium. Cranium Pentar? Cranium, yeah, no. Nope, Cranium Rat Pentar. Have you upset anyone, Lyra? Gil? Not that I remember. I don't think so. Gil? How would you quantify upset? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm concerned, everybody. I think we should be ready. <laughs> Lyra will ready herself with her glaive. <laughs> like... Gil doesn't think he has, but he's also kind of like, I mean, it could be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Is this my fault? It could be. Um, suddenly, you are surprised as from behind you, a second elemental appears and makes a lash with a flail at you all and uh 25 on gil oh my gosh let me live <laughs> my life let me live oh my i would God. like you to take um eight bludgeoning damage i would like to take no damage please i would also like a dc 13 con save oh my god oh jeez Oh, and um, you need to take 18 lightning damage. Oh, why? Oh my gosh. Uh, so goodbye, Gil. Goodbye. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. I did make that save with a um, 15 plus my 3 bonus. So Excellent. Well, you're not stunned. That's cool. Awesome. This and is, uh... yeah, you should probably all roll initiative. Ooh. Why is um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Will I be able to cast my spells in Cranium Rat form since Cranium Rats can do magic, or would I have to turn back? Like, if I'm just spell casting. If it's just a spell, then yeah, I would let you. Okay. Oh, wait, no, mm -hmm. isn't it, like, group... Is it groups of... Oh, where's my bolos? Did I put it back? I'm trying to remember if it's groups of rats that have spell casting or single rats. Um, I feel like it's maybe maybe it is only a group. I don't know if it was different since I'm I'm a druid. Mm. I don't know if it would be special. But I mean, you can't do verbal component spells. That's true. I could only squeak. Um, yeah, it's only swarms that have spell casting. Okay. If planes um, torment has taught me anything. It's taught me that. <laughs> I got twelve. Twelve for Penta. Got fourteen. Fourteen for Mercy. Uh, Lyra? Oh, I, got I got eleven. Okay. Gil? Um, I got four. Okay. So, order. Mercy, Penta, Lyra... Elementals Gill. Oh boy. So let's start with Mercy. Um, Mercy will turn around to see Gill getting flailed and electrified. Um, and she will rush forward and spread out both her arms to touch Lyra and Gill. Um, and she will cast Twinned Haste on them. So you have plus two to your AC. Yeah. Uh, you get extra action, which can be used for a number of things, including um, uh, an attack. And uh, you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. <clears throat> nice. Awesome. And I use three sorcery points. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Uh, 
that is so oh, thirsty. Yeah, that's my turn. And then I like squish myself into the bottom of the basket. Okay. I'm hide behind my skirt. Pintall. Are you muted? My bad. Um, turn back into Pentar so she can cast a spell. Did you say there were two of them? Yeah, there are. The second one has suddenly surprised you from behind. Okay. Um, well, she is going to attempt to cast Confusion on one of them. I guess the one that showed up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the first time I've ever used this spell. If you can read it out for everyone then. Okay. Um, that would be cool. Just says casting time, one action, range 90 feet. This spell assaults and twists creatures' minds, spawning delusions and provoking uncontrolled action. Each creature in a 10-foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range. So I don't know if they're, are they within 10 feet of each other or not? Uh, you would get everybody if you tried that. Okay. Um, I know with a lot of spells, you can choose a certain amount of them to not have an effect. Isn't that the case with 5th edition? It depends on the spell. It will tell you in the spell or it is a sorcerer thing. Um, what level spell is confusion? It's a fourth level enchantment. Okay, let's see if I can find it in my thing. Third confusion. Here we go. Each creature in a 10 foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose must succeed on wisdom save or be affected by it. So you can't choose who it affects. They have to wisdom save. F it. I'm going to do it because she's just like, whatever. So. It's real cool of you, Pentar. Yes. Confusion. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. We're going to have fun. So you're going to drop it on the basket and affect everybody? Yes. Okay. Uh Everyone in the party should have plus three, oh, thanks to our, um, don't Lyra and Gil both have... Yeah, we can only start. benefit from one, though. Yeah, that's fine. Choose one. Choose your favorite. <laughs> Choose your favorite paladin. <laughs> oh, that's cool. This is nice. Um, um, what should you see? Uh, 13. Okay, so one rolled a nat 20. Oh, it's a 13, yes. Yeah. And one rolled an 11 and has no modifier, so one is Yay. confused. Put a confusion on it. I like to think that as Mercy is like oh God, getting you. between Gil and Lyra to cast haste, she sees the cranium rat tumble and turn into Pentar, and, and Mercy's just like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> okay, did anybody else fail? Or I succeeded. I got exactly 13. Uh, yeah, I got 15, though I rolled a 6, um, <laughs> luckily proficient in wisdom saving throws, Yay! so... <laughs> Did everyone save then, yeah? <laughs> Yay! Um, so, what it says on what the Pentar. effect is, um... Yeah, Pentar has to save as well. Oh, I do? I didn't think the cast... Oh, no. We don't know. Just to keep things fair. Just to Aren't keep it. Spaced Hopefully, up. druids are also proficient. Although <laughs> oh, oh, well, that a said, it is. One. A... Uh, yay! <laughs> it's so. a concentration spell, so I'm wondering if you confuse yourself, then it breaks straight away. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's okay. But, Only um, one way to find out. An affected target can't take reactions and must roll a d10 at the start of each of its turns to determine its behavior for that turn. Um, so there's different numbers that tell you what it does, but. We can get to that when I guess the guy, the 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 man's is confused and needs to roll. Okay, uh, is that everything for Pentar's turn? Yeah. Then it's Lyra. I'm going to uh, get up from like probably because I'm so like crunched down a little bit, and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna cast Moonbeam, um, which I've never done before, oh. but it's with my oath spells. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Point in the direction of the the foul creature um, that attacked Gil, and I'm gonna cast Moonbeam. 
The silvery beam of pale light shines down in a five foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder centered on point within range. Um, so when the creature enters the spell area um, or starts a turn there, it's engulfed in ghostly flames that causes its searing pain. It has to make a constitution saving throw. Okay, um, the creature is actually up next. Is there anything else for your turn? You also have a haste action if you want to. Oh, yeah. From like, the glaive. Ooh, that's true. Or there's um, other things you can do. I can check. Yeah, yeah, what are some of the other things? Spells. Like, you can dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. Hmm. I don't really have any objects or anything. Do I have to use it on this turn, or can I uh, save no, it? No, you, you get it, like, every turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll save it, then, or, or do it next turn. Do it next it's turn. somewhere in the balloon basket. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, duck down. Yeah, just, like, crouch down. It's like, ah. <laughs> But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's the creature next, so it's going to do a deck save for Moonbeam. Uh, nat 20. That die, I really like that one. And then, but then we're going to do a d10 to see what it does on confusion. Does it still take half damage? If it's oh, it might do. Uh, let's see. It takes 2d10. Hold on. Where am I looking? Okay. Uh, on a failed save, or half as much damage on, damage on a successful one. So okay, it takes so roll some damage, please. How about the one um, It's rolled a 9 on confusion. Now, I've got the card in front of me, but I don't know if you want to tell everyone what a 9 is, Kayla. A nine is the creature can act and move normally. So, boo. boo. <laughs> no. I got these really nice new chess six dice, and they are pretty good. Very nice. I recommend. Evil. And that was six points of. Oh, yeah. Look! Look how sparkly that is. That is quite sparkly. Ooh. 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 And these ones. This is the borealis, and it's just like I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, it's like got like a little yeah, it's got like a swirly shine. It's they're really mm. nice. I recommend them. Mm. Advertising's not over. <laughs> um, so it can act normally. So it is going to uh, make three flail attacks at plus seven. So well, that's only a three, so that's not going to hit anybody. Um. Gil, 19, that just hits you, doesn't it? Oh, no, I uh, have the haste, so it gives me oh, that. Oh, you don't, you've got 20. Yeah, you've got 20. Yeah. Nice. Just, just, just nicks him. <laughs> okay, but the 22 will, so that last one yeah, will hit. Yeah, So that's um, 8 bludgeoning. It true. And then the other one is going to lash forward, and it's going to make one at Mercy, and oh. that's 25, so that's 8 damage. Uh, Gil is going to use his reaction. Oh. Uh, he, his reaction, um, because he is, he took protection fighting style, uh, he will throw his shield in front of you, and mechanically it will have the, uh, um, monster roll at disadvantage. Okay, I'll roll another one. Uh, okay, that was a three, so yeah. Yay, my that hero! Misses. We're not married. It clunks the shield. <laughs> um, the second attack is on uh, Lyra. Uh, again, a three. Okay, I'm not using that one anymore. It's pretty, but it rolls threes. And then the last attack uh, is going to roll at uh, Lyra again. And then another three. I'm just rolling threes. You did your job, Dice. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Dice. <laughs> Thank you. After I talk these... Don't buy these dice. They're terrible. They roll threes. <laughs> But they are beautiful. They're, They're beautiful, beautiful, but they roll threes. You like a pretty face. <laughs> what, what, what I... I'm gonna get some blue ones down. I'm getting my packs dice out now. R.I.P. Everyone. <laughs> it's getting real. <laughs> it's mad. If, if I crack... break out the if I break out the pony thing. dice, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of. I was like, oh no. <laughs> um. Okay. Um, that's both the elementals that have had their turn. Oh, and I need to make another wisdom save on the yes, confusion. Yes, I was about to say, yep. Um, so that's a nine, so I know it's still confused. Ha! And Gil, it's your turn. Yay! It's me! And your reaction uh, resets as it shows up. Yeah, yeah. That's, I've never used that reaction before, and I'm, I'm glad it worked. <laughs> because I was like, mm -hmm, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, so... Um, he's going to use a spell slot and uh, attack one of the elementals with his with his vehicle wall with the chain to throw it and pull it back um, twice for his attack action. Mm -hmm. And he's going to try and use to fight twice on those if they hit. But if they don't, whatever. He's not. Uh, first one is not going to hit, so let's just assume that that didn't happen. Um... Gil's just like, mm, test, test shot. Yeah, it, test shot, test shot. The second attack was... The first attack was a 9. This one is a 17. You, um, it just narrowly darts out of the way. Oh, You no. almost had it. Oh, almost. Uh, Very close. Can I attack on a haste action, or am I just limited to... Um, no, you can yeah. make a weapon attack. I can make a weapon attack? Yeah. He's going to try one more time. One more with the Sikulwa. And let's see if it works. Look. It's been a long day. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> this elemental is tired. Let's just watch some Netflix. You threw your shield in front of Mercy, so she's probably like flailing and like grabbing <laughs> you and stuff. And you're like trying to throw your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he misses like three times in a row and then pretends that none of it happened. <laughs> okay, uh, we're back to you, Mercy. <laughs> okay. Um, Mercy is uh, just going to, I guess, cast. What do I do? I'll, do a, I'll do a proper spell. Um, she's going to cast a. Oh my gosh, cat. Get out of here. Get out of here, cat. Okay. Uh, second level chaos bolt um, at the one that's been attacking Gil. And, oh, my cat just jumped right back up. Okay. Um, so I make a ranged spell attack. Uh, it's a 16 plus 7, so 23. Oh, that definitely hits, yeah. Alright, I get 2 d8s. Why? Where did all my d8s go? There's one. And this one. Um, alright, and that one determines, so it's acid damage, um, and, can I get another, yeah, so that's 7 plus 4, 11 acid damage. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. Uh, is that on the one that Gil's been attacking? Yes. Okay, cool. So she just holds up like her stained glass hand, and it changes a bunch of colors, ending on green, and like a green acid shoots out from her hand. Awesome. Anything else? Um, no, that's it. Okay, Penta, back to I you. Continue concentrating on haste. Okay. Um, I want to polymorph one of them. Okay. So. Wisdom saving throw. Ooh, okay. Uh, files? Six. Okay. I just, I want to polymorph him into just a little centipede. And I guess since we're in the air, he falls to his death. Yes, this centipede just sort of like, is <laughs> like, which one are you polymorphing? Um, the one that hasn't been hit. Okay, so that's the, the one in front of you. So the other one's sort of like boy. over the basket, whereas this one is just off the side. So yeah. it, like, it looks like it vanishes. And then, like, Penta, because you knew what you did. Um, you can you just see these little legs just all working again, and it just drops. And, uh, like... yeah, you, I'll take that one off the ball. You drop that one into the void. Yay. Falls <laughs> forever. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, anything else for your turn? Um, no, I just go, Yay. Um, is polymorph for concentration as well? It is, so my confusion is broken. Okay, yeah, yeah. I will delete those. Off Worth then. it. Yeah, definitely. I should have done that in the first place. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, whoops. Uh, then uh, it's Lyra's turn, if that's everything for Penta. Yes. I'm going to attack uh, the one that's, I guess, crawling over the basket, or has, like... Yes, yeah, it's closer in. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'm gonna go with my glaive, and I'm gonna take a sh uh, take a little swipe at it. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Oh, that's a five. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so it doesn't connect at all. Um, but I'm gonna use haste, and I'm gonna wind up and do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's a four. I don't like these dice. They're 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 dead to me. Okay. So I'm too concentrated on Moonbeam, I guess, still in the distance that I just don't hit at all. Okay. So never mind. <laughs> um but because you're concentrating on Moonbeam, I need to make that deck save. Uh sixteen. Okay. So is that half damage again? Yep. Oh, how much did it take last time? Six, uh, six points of radiant damage. Oh, cool. I don't remember asking you, and I don't think I wrote it down. It's all good. And how much this time? Oh, right. I have to roll for that. All right, so that's four. Okay. Awesome. Four radiant. So it's moonbeam burns it, and then it's going to make three flail attacks. It's gonna. Whip at Mercy, then at Pentar, then back at Lyra for moonbeaming it. Where did that die go? I just lost the die. There it is. So, 21, who was first? Pentar. Then 26. Oh, and then a nat 20. My dice have decided to behave. Hmm. Oh, aren't you okay? <laughs> so, um... That's an eight, an eight, and then Lyra, you are going to take sixteen. Ten. So who were you attacking? Uh Pentar, then Mercy, and then Lyra. No, not six. Right, what am I doing? So it's two. It's sorry, it's twelve. Twelve. Twelve for me? Okay. Yeah, twelve for you. Right. Uh Gil's gonna mom arm one of them. And uh I'm gonna choose who's closest to Gil. Um, did you wanna mom arm the crit? To be honest, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and mom arm the the crit and uh, take that damage instead <laughs> with my divine allegiance. I actually rolled the twenty again. I really like this purple one. Oh no no no! It's not it's not a disadvantage. I'm using oh. divine allegiance to take the damage in place of the person. Ah, oh, that's twelve damage then to you. Okay. I thought you were using the shield thing again. Nope, not this time. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm full of poor decisions. Okay. Oh, I will um, hellish rebuke that yeah. one. Uh, let's see. So it is. Oh, you make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity save. Okay. I'll use I'll use the red one because the red one sucks. Seventeen. Um, a seventeen I believe will beat mine, but you'll still take half. So okay. Ten, thirteen, so six. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just double check just in case. Yeah, my DC 15. Okay. Um, uh, that is it for the elemental, so it's Gil's turn if there's nothing else anyone wants to react to. Yeah, Gil's gonna cough up some blood, um, and then he's going to, uh, he's gonna use his Yukawa. Am I still hasted? Yes. Oh, okay. wait, let me roll a concentration yeah, yeah. save. Yeah. Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, so Gil is gonna, um, use his Yukawa for his, he's gonna do three actions and attack three times, and let's see whether or not his... It's any better this time. Uh, that is a 16, which misses. That's an 8, which misses. This is cool. This is great. Did Still's you run a bomb? Okay. I sure did! Oh no. I sure did. Mm. Yeah, Gil's not having a great time. Gil's a great um, punching bag, but not super helpful in this fight today. <laughs> uh, any bonus actions? Um, no. Nope, not this time. 
uh, then we are back to Mercy again. All right. Mercy is just going to, I think, hurl a firebolt um, over towards uh, the elemental that's left. Mm -hmm. That's a roll to hit. Uh, 12 plus 7, 19. Yes, that hits. Um, and I deal 12 fire damage. Ooh. That's it for me. Okay. Maths time. Okay, Penta. Okay, um... Pentar once sees that Gil is coughing up blood and casts Conjure Animals to conjure a giant boar to protect Gil from anything else that tries to hit him to just get in the way and be a meat shield. That's sweet. Okay. As the boar appears, the Morena Loth goes, Wait, you didn't pay for that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to use my, my reaction to tip him over the side. <laughs> it's like, the heck is this guy doing this whole time? Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just like, here, use this. And a giant boar just <laughs> appears in your face, like, and he's tasked with just being a meat shield for you. Aw. Thanks, Pentar. Thought you didn't like me. Gil, he goes, it's extra for me to fight with you. Oh. <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> He'll just. That's okay. We can. We'll just handle it ourselves. That's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, Lyra's turn. That just slapped off of me, Jesus. Um, I'm gonna keep on concentrating on Moonbeam. Mm -hmm. Um, and is the there's still a creature in in Moonbeam? In yes. Moonbeam. Yeah, that creature yes. in the Moonbeam. Okay. So I'm gonna like. I I was gonna like move it, but if they're still in there, I'll I'll leave it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I will keep on with that. So, um, but also with my with my haste, I'll try to like slice and dice some more and see if it works. Um, please work. This is the new. This is a different dice now. So we'll see. Come on, like a seven? No. <laughs> okay. This is fine. Everything's fine. I've rolled so many single digits today. Yeah. It's like in no. your defense. There's a giant boar in the way, uh, in the, like, yes. of the whole basket <laughs> sitting on it. Yeah, I just imagine like when like Pentar summons it, it like bumps Lyra a little bit, and she like tries to like, but yeah, it doesn't connect. So that's okay. That's totally cool. All right, I guess that's it really for her turn for me. Did you do your heisted attack as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So two slices then with the with the glaive. I'll see if this one connects. Oh please. 13. In total? Mm -hmm. In total. No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, this thing has like a body made of like air. It's very wispy and. Yeah, Lyra's <laughs> very confused by it. <laughs> probably also never seen one before, which is an interesting thing to note on. So she's probably like enamored by its beauty, but also terrified and. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so it's. Going to make it save for the moonbeam still. Um, deck save a dirty 20 this time. So, can you roll your moonbeam damage? Yep. One. One radiant. <laughs> Not doing too well. Okay, I'll, t I'll still take some damage off it. Moon is very sassy today. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. Hmm. Like, look, what more do you want? I've been here for like four rounds already. Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, nah. <laughs> calm down. Um, <laughs> it's gonna take a swing at you, Lyra. Um, okay, that's twenty-three. Twenty-three. Mm -hmm. Mama, I'm sorry. Because uh, it's gonna swing at you, Gil, but that's only fifteen. Oh, that's fine. And then it's going right. to go at Pentar, and that's only a nine. Okay. So it's eight bludgeoning. Eight. Oh, and wait. Did one of them hit Gil? Yeah. It would hit the boar instead, because the boar's oh, right. tasked with being in the oh. way. Gil's not going to protect this boar. 
just FYI. That's fine. He's, it's a fae, it's like conjure animals is like, um. Just jumping in the way. Fae, yeah, it's a fae spirits that take the form of beasts, so it's not even, it's Aww. not even a real animal. It's fine. Oh, okay. Guild no longer values its life. Um, how many damages did it take? Uh, eight. Eight bludgeoning. He's, he's good. He's meant, he's meant to be hurt. He has lots of health. And then it's Gil's turn. All right. So Gil is, um, Gil is first of all going to, he's feeling a little bad, um, but he's going to, he's going to do his attack action. Am I still hasted? I, I never know how long haste lasts. So, <gasps> yes, finally. Oh, oh my gosh. Lisa, you're really quiet. I can't hear you. You're still hasted? Can you hear me now? Just. How about now? Yes. Yes, okay. that's much better. So I got a dirty 20 on that first attack, which I'm going to use Divine Smite on. Woohoo! Uh, yes, finally. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to attack for like 6,000 years. 6,000 years. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Divine Smite on that one. Oh my gosh, where's my... There it is. I found it. So 2d8. 1. So that's 8. And... 10. Plus... With my Yikawa. Which my Yikawa does a 1d6 because of that one thing we did. Is your Yikawa magical? It is, but we decided a 1d6 because we gave it that one, uh, spell. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's fine then. Yeah, so that's 16 damage on that first attack. Okay. Oh, <gasps> yes, oh my gosh. 24 for the second attack. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, finally. And he's going to spend a spell slot for Divine Smite for that. So, three plus... Awesome. Okay, so nine for that second attack um, with the Divine Smite, and uh, then he's going to use his last... And can Did you say I can cast a spell on my haste action? You, That's a thing. Uh, you cannot. You can do a I single can't. attack. Uh, and okay, yeah. Like and That's right. I totally... I remember that. So he'll just attack again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he will, oh, it's, I feel like whatever non-existent spiritual energy he has been pretending to worship just ignored him for the first half of this fight. And it's finally paying off. Finally, they're, they're back. They haven't forsaken him. So that's a 25. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to spend another spell slot for a divine snide. So that's okay. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I almost dropped my dice. Okay. So that one is nine again. Okay. Yeah, this thing is looking really bad. It's like um its form is getting wispier. I'm doing it. Yeah, it's starting to fade away. There's Finally like, making a difference. Yeah, there's like pieces of armor suspended in the foam and they're sort of drooping slightly more. Um, and we're back to Mercy. Um, alright. Uh, the creature looks like... I think I'm just going to cast a fourth level Chaos Bolt. Uh, so we'll hold up my hand again and it'll start to change colors. Um... Is, so this is force damage. Uh, so 10, 16, I roll these down, 16 plus 6. Uh, so 22 force damage. Do you need to roll to hit on Chaos Bolt? Or is it safe? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. In 18 plus 7, so 25. Oh, yeah, yeah. So how much force damage, sorry? 22. Wow. And I'm going to say her hand is like clear, like just glass now. Okay, yeah, you take a huge chunk out of the creature, um, and, like, it's, 
bra when his brace or on the arm that's not holding the flail just falls into the void. Yeah. This thing is nearly done. And Mercy's also next to the boar is gonna stand over Gil protectively. Okay. Uh, Pinto. Gil's gonna pose like those fantasy, <laughs> like those sword and sandal <laughs> fantasy, where he's like. Back to me. <laughs> does he activate like the cloak of billowing? So like. He the... does. Oh yes. Are you are you leaning dramatically back on the he giant is. boar? And like... he's like, you know, he's like draped against Mercy like this, and like the boar is behind them, like silhouetted. Ooh, this is like <laughs> a Renaissance <laughs> painting. I'm just what I was just... Yeah, I'm into it. Beautiful. Um, Pentar would like to cast Ray of Sickness on him. Mercy's and probably like did not succeed because that was an 11. So. No, that doesn't hit. Um, and as a bonus, bonus action, she would actually like to cast Healing Word on Gil. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. My hero. I don't know. She's like... She's like this. She really likes you right now because she's like, "Wow, Gil is actually into some gross shit," and I really appreciate. It. <laughs> Secretly, one of the cool kids. Yeah. So that is a seven, seven healing, seven. Oh my god. Yes. I imagine that she just gives him like a really crusty. Well, actually, like, it's... Uh, uh... oh, sorry. No, it's healing word. So I figured she probably yelled like. Pike off or something awful at you, oh! and then you just heal a minor amount of damage. <laughs> I love it. He's like, I feel galvanized. She believes in me. <laughs> um, Lyra. All right. So I'm going to continue with Moonbeam if I can still. I think it, it says concentration for up to a minute, so I'm assuming yeah. it's still. We're still good. I um, can't remember how many rounds we've had. I think it's been like four. So it needs far. to be ten, so. We're, yeah, good. So we're good. We're good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna continue with that, and I won't move it as long as there's something in it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm going to take another. Like I'm gonna use now. I'm kind of getting fed up with my glaive. So Lyra's gonna take out her uh, long sword that she has, which is like on her back, and she's just gonna like full on like take this back at me again. Okay, please wait. Yes, that's good. Sixteen. No. What? <laughs> yeah, it's... the highest I've gone so far. It's tough to hit. Oh. <laughs> no, my heart. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. As long as Moonbeam does some damage. That's yeah, all yeah. Your about. sword actually connects with like some armor plate on the creature. <laughs> no. Just, Chloe, just like, clang okay. in the void. Uh, I'm gonna need you to start lying. <laughs> Lyra cannot lie. I don't feel good right <laughs> now. I'm a little stressed. <laughs> oh god okay so well if that didn't work so she's really frustrated but she um rolled a nine for the radiant damage on the moonbeam so okay let me roll the save for that are you taking a high speed attack oh yeah and I'll, I'll do that too um i guess i'll take another swing at it with my long sword because i can't use like any spells or anything with the haste so i will do that um, alright. So it's a 15, 19 with my long Oh, sword. that hits. For the hit. Yes, alright. 1d8 piercing plus 2, so that's 4. four is, it, is it magical? Um, it's like, I've had, I've had it on me. It's the uh, Moon Touch sword. So it is technically, um... Oh, then I will take all four off. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, in darkness, the unsheathed blade of the sword sheds moonlight, creating yeah. a bright light in a 15-foot radius. I uh, will say that that can be magical for the sake of okay. this fight. Cool. That can be fine. Um, what's your spell save, DC? Uh, that would be a 13. Oh, it rolled a 12 on Moonbeam, so it's going to take all of 9. Woohoo! That's awesome. So some more, like, plates fall into the void, and this thing literally just has, like, a helm left where its head would be. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's it's turn. It's gonna take a swing at you, Lyra, and roll nat twenty. Oof, oof! My red die has stopped rolling three. Can, <laughs> can I with the shield? Can I with the yeah. shield? Please? You wanna uh, disadvantage that? 
I do. I don't want to take the damage. I'm sorry, Lyra. Okay. Uh, so I understand. Instead, it rolls a 14, which makes it with a plus 7, 21. Well, you know what? We tried. It's not crit you. It's not crit you. So it's only yeah. eight, 8 bludgeoning. Whew. Uh, then it's going to swing at you, Gil, for all those hits. Oh Does it matter God. that the um, the boar and Mercy are standing over Gil? Uh, well, it will Same try, level. and it will hit probably hit the ball because it's trying to hit Gil. Okay. Right. Uh, but that only rolled a uh, two, so that was nine, so that's going to miss. And oh my God, that yeah. hit... Oh, that's jacked. That's a seven, so again, that's going to miss Gil. Yay. So, I had a hard day, guys. <laughs> Gil, it's your turn. This creature is getting erratic and wildly flailing its flail. There's not much left of it, just a helm. Sun's getting real low, big guy. Let's take a nap, please. Please, let's take a nap. Um, yeah, so Gil's uh, second verse, same as the first, with some with some attack rolls. Um, gonna be using the Yikawa again, since that seemed to work out, and it's a, it is one of those fancy magical devices. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. JK! Uh, now we're going to give it a shot. Come on, dice, don't do this. Actually, no, that's good. Oh, thank God. Uh, okay, so plus six is 23. So the mm -hmm. second one does hit. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to use up a spell, shot, spell slot for Divine Smite again. Okay, let's see what so that does. Eight. Six. And D6 is... Uh, 14. So 14 for that. Uh, the wings dissipate and the helm falls endlessly into the void. Gil's going to take a nap. Gil, are you okay? We'll kind of <clears throat> lean down over you. This, this dude's just covered in blood. <laughs> like, I lean down over you, but I don't touch you. <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best. <laughs> the the boar snuffles at you. He'll be very dramatic about it, though. The Maranaloth goes, Well, oh, that took its time, didn't it? We're very helpful, both in warning us that this could happen and doing anything about it. <laughs> uh, and I'll pour some of uh, water from my water skin onto a little cloth and I'll just dab Gil. It's going to point make... at the boar again and go, Are you paying for that? Uh, I assume I can dissipate them. Yeah, yeah. So Pentar just like snaps her finger and the board disappears in a flash of like fey, green fey light. Like, because it's got like that tall corpse skin, you can't really tell, but you think he might be disappointed that he's not getting more money from you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get any uh, renter's insurance on this balloon, so... <laughs> I'm a little concerned as it is. Yeah, Ooh. Gil's gonna be very dramatic about having his wounds stabbed too. He's got. <sighs> I haven't touched you yet, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> this is Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> um, can Can Lyra um do lay on hands for for Gil as, as like he's like kind of like oh god no oh, like you know can like... she please? <laughs> yes, I will give. How many do you think you'd need? How many? Um, yeah, so would... let's say hypothetically that on a scale of 1 to 68, I'm at about a 29. I will also oh, say no. that the Marana Loth goes, it's still a while before you'll get there. Oh, God. So you can oh. always take a short rest if you want in the bottom of the balloon. The bottom of the oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you 10 for now. Cool. Looks That's like fine, it. Stingy. I know you're not your favorite <laughs> child or whatever. <laughs> No, I do appreciate it. <laughs> I know Meg is the favorite, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> Lyra just has, like, in, in the back of her head, she's like, well, you know, he'll get a long rest or a little yeah. rest anyway, so, like, I won't need to use all of it. Like, <laughs> like, you know, teach them being tough. <laughs> yeah, it's like, honestly, and honestly, he's a grown man. Like, come on. <laughs> it's like, he has his own lay on hands. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a like, week. Right. <laughs> but he's our our thank own. you i appreciate it <laughs> yeah 
Um, well, while this argument's going going on, Pintar wants to walk over and spit on Gil, which would be casting Cure Wounds. Ew! Gil hates it, but looks as appreciative as he can, which looks like... <laughs> like just like a toddler's sad face, just like... And that's 11 healing! <gasps> Aw, thank you! spit! Oh, <laughs> That's so it's gross. Right on your head. Oh, is that that pentapede spit? Is it yeah. bright green? When oh, it's definitely like, like her you? spit is definitely green, like all the time, greenish brown. Oh, it'll feel like it. I'll bet it feels like like when you crack an egg. Yes, and it's just like really viscous, and he'll mm -hmm. like look at Mercy, just like what? What is this? <laughs> Help! I'm not what? getting that on my napkin, Gil. No, help me. <laughs> I don't like around. try to wipe off try to wipe it off on Mercy. I feel what? like <laughs> Pentar is the other side of the basket. Oh. <laughs> Pentar has accepted Gil into the death club. Oh you're, you're part of it. <laughs> this, this is, is weird. Initiation. I don't like this. <laughs> it doesn't even go here. <laughs> so, um, a few hours later, this balloon is over uh, the next orb now, um, and it goes deep down into the earth, um, into some winding gorges, through canyons and caverns, and you are deposited outside um, a small cave mouth, and the Morenoloth holds out a sort of bony thing hand. For his payment. Lyra will drop a candy into his outreached hand. <laughs> and sort of like looks at it and then sniffs it and then is like, This is not gold! Uh, <laughs> she's gonna be like, Well, I just think you need to, you know, nourishment is a very important thing uh, in anyone's life. And then she'll like look at Gil and then be like, mm, You bring to me. I just Gil. imagined it was a Werther's, and you could be like, yeah. it is gold. It's always gold when it's Werther's Werther. originals. <laughs> I like to imagine. I like to imagine that Gil is like already started walking away. <laughs> it's just like pay the man. <laughs> like you have the gold. You have all of our money. <laughs> and he'll just like. Uh... Okay, so what is it? Four fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll give over four fifty or whatever. I just imagine like forever how many feet away he was, like as he walked away. Like he's just making that uh noise as he's walking back the uh, whole time until he drops the money into he's his He's like hardcore stomping, so like his body like makes his voice crack a little when he's walking he says, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like a ten year old. <laughs> kind of put her arm in front of Gil before Gil pays the guy and just says, I feel like we deserve a discount for our troubles and Ooh. saving your balloon. My so balloon would have been fine. I was attacked because you were on it. Oh. Well. That feels like it's not our fault. Yeah, we weren't warned of that. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know you've upset somebody. Nor did we. Uh, I think he's gaslighting us. I think this balloon guy's <laughs> Like, we have to rely on all of his information. Okay, I'll just give you the gold. <laughs> he's just like, ugh. Yeah. Alright, never mind. So, <laughs> um, so, Gil, something that you were told that is not on your missive, because mm -hmm. they will not write it down, because it's a way off of Carceri. Oh. Um... You know that once you reach Gallows Home, the other side of Gallows Home, there is a portal and it needs a bone shard to activate. And that's the way off. And the Morena Loth says to you, This is where you need to be in the cave. And you step through this small um, cave mouth and through a short passage, and then this, it opens out into a massive chamber. And you are on this small ledge, um, and then it just drops off 
half a mile down below you and mm -hmm. you're looking out over this cavern and it must be at least five miles across and you think this must be Gallo's home and the reason you think this must be Gallo's home is because hanging down from the ceiling of the cavern are these huge huge ropes and they are attached to the feet of giant bodies and the bodies are just hanging and their throats are slit Don't like that. And you look down and the floor of the cavern is littered with bone shards. And looking at the size of them, they look tiny from up here, but you feel that if you went down, that they would be like human-sized shards of bone. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so we're supposed to break this halfling out and also get him back to sickle. Do okay. a perception check. Okay, yeah. Anyone can do it. Nope. Nope. Alright. <laughs> Let me look at do I get anything for perception checks? I rolled a two, so that didn't What's my perception? I got a 22. Awesome. So, I got a 6. Excellent. Um, Penta, you can see, on all, you're admiring these bodies. You're like, oh, this death is fantastic. And as you look at them, you realise they're covered in, like, maggots. But they're human-sized maggots. They're huge larvae wriggling around. They're going oh. up between the toes and down again. And... Just Even better. Uh, but then you realise, as you look, there's, like, holes carved in some of the bodies, and there's, like, things seem to be living in the giants. It's like a town. And you do actually spot a really small person wandering around on one of the bodies. Okay. And how far away is this? It's up, it's up above? These are all hanging down, and you think you may you know, be able to find a way across between the bodies. Um, can, I, I would like, so words, words are hard. Um, I would actually like to use my new wild shape. Or wait, no, we're not level eight yet, are we? We're level eight on the next one. Um, just kidding. Forget I said that. Um, I point this out to everybody. Ooh. Where oh, there are. The... Oh, yeah. Uh, you you can see there are bridges between some of the bodies, actually. As yeah, you're all looking more disturbed. Yeah, you look at there are bridges. There are buildings built on the corpses. Yeah, and I'm, I describe it like I point it out, and when I point it out, I talk about it like it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I'm like, look at these cute little maggots up there, just doing their best. Look at all this. And Lyra's just like, eh. yeah. Lyra's just like looking, just slack jawed in awe. She's just like, and looks at Pentar, and she's like, oh, okay, I I believe you. And you're in all things. As you're watching, there's like a group of people on one of the bridges, and then they heave something, and you watch one of the maggots get thrown off. Can I try to catch him? This is far away from you. You're watching oh no. This. <laughs> Little bab and gone. Uh, is the halfling we're looking for up there, Gil? Um, does Gil have any idea if the halfling would be up there? If these are like domiciles, or if this would be the prison complex? Um, well, you were told the halfling was in Gallo's home. Okay, okay. So, Gil will look up there and say, yes. Yes, it is. Firstly, we'll look up there, and how high up are the toes? They are... I mean, you are currently half a mile above the bone of carpeted floor. Um, okay, so a lot. Yeah, they are quite high up, but like, there are bridges running between all the bodies, and or ropes, and there is a way across. that we get up there and find him, uh, 
the sooner we can get out of here. Um. Yeah, Lyra will agree. She'll be like, "We need to, we need to find whoever this person is," and 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 she'll look at Gil and she'll be like, "And just, and for justice, justice, <laughs> yes, justice." Gil's Gil's looking kind of tired, so he's justice, yes, justice. <laughs> Second guessing everything, probably at this point. More like he's like, oh my god, I wish. Can't I just. I want to go home. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> mm. um, Alright, so should we travel over and maybe climb up one of the giant ropes or the bridges? Does it look like we can do that? Maz? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, does it look like we can climb up one of the ropes or go cross a bridge to get to these bodies to look for this person? Yeah, yeah, you can pick a way across. Okay. Do we do that? Do you do let that? Pentar, does everyone do oh, that? Let Pentar lead the way, maybe, because she's so happy. Oh, yeah, she's just like, all right, let's Adventures. go. <laughs> um, oh. Suddenly, very adventurous because I'm in a terrain that I enjoy. As you get to the um, onto the first body, uh, suddenly a um, maggot drops down from between the toes of the giant and hits you. And I need you to make a uh, either a dexterity or a oh, hang on, let me roll again. Uh, I think you better say or a hug check because <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't knock you off. Uh, it sort of hits you. Um, and you're gonna take uh, a couple points of damage there. Worth as it, it. Clonks you in the head, <laughs> and then it falls off uh, down into the bone forest no, below. Can I try to? Can I try to like grab him before he falls? It was trying to knock you off. But I love him. And I love him. <laughs> he is absolutely. Um, it's like human sized. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, you can if you want. Uh, strength yeah. save. Yes. They're shaped like a friend. Shaped like a friend, and I'm really weak, and I got a six. Is this an NPC? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, this maggot just sort of goes flying off down to that bone carpet below you all. He was probably slimy and hard to grab. Yeah, it slips out. It's gross. It's a really gross dude. Bill definitely laughs. He's like, <laughs> gross. <laughs> um, but as you look her up at the toes, you can see there's more of these um, lava trying to hide between the toes. These maggot things. I love them very much. <laughs> I start naming them. But I, I don't know that she would come up with good names and just be like, gray, squirmy, slimy. I thought you were going to say Greg. No, I said gray because I, I was just like a color. I don't know. <laughs> Please let's name one Greg. Please. Greg. <laughs> That's beautiful. Steve. Steve. This one's George. Jeff. <laughs> Greg, but it's like high, it's high fantasy Greg. So there's like a hyphen and like two yeah. eyes and, and a tilde yeah, yeah like a silent like o or something yeah there's like a o with one of the dashes through it yeah perfect <laughs> you pronounce it greek 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 <laughs> it's greg but you have to say it like the swedish chef greek <laughs> greek <laughs> sorry lisa what's mercy doing um, I was, are we able to get up to the toes and into the giants, or like, on land? How do you mean getting into the giants? No, I, you made it sound like there were like little like people were inside. They're like around the bodies. If there's like, um, so like where the giants belly is maybe there's like a little ledge and so they've built houses on it or they've oh, carved like on the holes outside. on the outside okay, can i get onto a ledge easily um or it's like a like a um like a treetop city i need the trees are giant bodies okay awesome can we get up there 
um, you can make your way across bridges and stuff, but um, as you go across, um, a maggot drops down onto you as well, and then falls off. And uh, oh, you are going to take a point of damage as it lands on you. I was just asking if we could get on a ledge because oh. I do. Mercy was gonna levitate and not touch anything, and maybe oh, okay. like, balloon to like push herself along. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like a balloon. Somebody just grabs her tail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ignore that then. Ignore that. Yeah, let Mercy can le levitate and push herself across. Yeah. Awesome. Um, do we know the name of the halfling we're looking for? Uh, Gil does, and Gil will totally mispronounce it. I definitely have this. And Gil will say that too. He'll say, I definitely, I, I, I put it, um, I just had... I just had it in my hand. I where did I uh Schemo? Schemo? Is that a halfling name? Do halflings use names like that? Schemo? 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 I know a lot about halflings, but Mercy will just start yelling Schemo. Oh my gosh. Schemo. A head pops out of a building right nearby you going, Yes. A halfling head? Oh, a halfling head. We're looking okay. for you. Come down here. Why are you looking for me? Who are you? I'm Mercy. Mercy? Is that short for Mercy Killer? Um, that makes me uncomfortable that you said that. I do not like that phrase. Schemo, <laughs> would you like some justice? Oh, I appear to have had justice very served to me. He looks up oh, and down at your you uniform and he's you like... Kill. Oh, so, so this is justice. This is good. Uh, apparently, according to your lot, putting me here when I did nothing wrong. Oh, so this is bad? Gil is, like, super confused now. I don't know. Imprisoning an innocent man? Is that justice? Uh... Mm. Honestly, it just doesn't... Like, the missive has given him no information about this, so he's just like... Are you innocent, though? Like, I don't... <laughs> well, Did... I certainly am. Can I insight check this? Yeah. Cool. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a problem. And he's gonna turn around and look at everybody else and say, He looks innocent, right? Does he look... Does he look innocent to y'all? Like, does he does he look innocent to you guys? Because, I don't know, I guess he... Yeah, I got a 10. Ooh. Yeah, you're not sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you've mean, been told he's innocent. I mean, been told he's innocent, and he says he's innocent, so, like, why would... I mean, is... It, like, but everything then that, adds up, right? That sounds mm -hmm. like the sort of thing an innocent person would say, or someone right. trying to get and, out would say. Oh my gosh, so that's three things that adds up, and only one that doesn't like i'm 75 percent sure that he's innocent this is probably fine right right um he'll maneuver me under his window uh gil will use her tail as a balloon string <laughs> and, and i'll like, like float over and then i'm like it's okay you can let go now and i'm gonna float up to the window where the halfling is mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna say grab his collar i'm gonna say we need you to get the heck out of here don't know why, but my friend needs you. I'm going to try to pull him out. Okay. Um, yeah, he's not going to resist. He's like, ah! Okay. Ah! Alright. What do you I'm mean? Get down at Gil and start floating down with this halfling. He's like, oh, well, I shouldn't be here. Are you here to rescue me? Are you, are you heroes? Um, <laughs> I'll look at Gil and I'll meet Gil's eyes and I'll say, yeah. Gil's not here. looking at you because you're floating over him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and he's a gentleman, so he's not looking at you. Okay, well, he doesn't notice this then, but I'll look at Gil and I'll say, yeah, we're heroes. <laughs> and I'll float down and they'll be like, catch my tail. He'll... Well... <laughs> <laughs> right. We've got well, the tattling. Yeah, and as soon as... As soon as you land, Pentar has her, like, ritual dagger out and she was like, I was promised corpses. And she just like looks at the halfling. This whole thing 
It's all a corpse. Everything is a corpse here. No, I want to. I need. I need new zombies. Is this a zombie? No, not this <laughs> one. Uh, let's. Do we see? Do we see anything that could be like a dead body around here? Oh, there's maggots crawling up to you. They, <gasps> they menacing. They look oh, menacing. Like well, like they're puppies. Like somebody has like five puppies. It's just like. <gasps> It just goes and pets them. She like kill, kill one of those. That's perfect. No. Um. Oh, wow. Kentar, you can keep them in the basement. Uh, two. Of th there's like so three of them crawling up to you, and two of them try and hit, and one actually rolled nat one, so it goes to bite you, and then just rolls off the side. Does it kiss oh, you no. instead? Oh, okay. Oh, it just goes it's for just... your cheek, <laughs> like it's gonna bite you. <laughs> you think it's a kiss, so you're like, <gasps> oh my god. It's just like a slime trail. <laughs> <laughs> But then one does actually bite you for one damage, one piercing damage. I'm just gonna look over at everybody and be like, "Cause they like me." Because <laughs> <laughs> it's gnawing on your arm, just like. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. Oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I could see. I could already tell Kayla's like doing the math in her head right now. Like, how much damage can Pentar take trying to carry this thing home? Or <laughs> yeah, she has to like, die. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Oh. Great. Gil, we've got your halfling. How do we okay. get out of here? Uh, Gil will pick up the halfling and like carry him under his arm like a like a bushel of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this poor halfling doesn't know. <laughs> well, doesn't next know time he won't end up in prison. <laughs> Gil, look at him. What did you do? He's like, the mercy killers, did they change their minds then? Did they realize what justice really was? L look, I, I that word. I don't like that word. <laughs> justice. It's, uh, let's just say we are doing justice currently at this moment. Do you like justice then? I love justice. Well, how do we get out of here? I've been here for ages. Uh, uh Gil's like thinking about it. He's like, I know there's some bones that. Uh, bones. Uh. You name bones. Are, are there any bones? Do you have a bone on you? He sort of like rummages in his pocket and then pulls out a little bone flute. Oh, yeah. This Gil one? will totally take that. Yeah, yeah. He'll take that. Hey, does, that's mine! Does Gil know where the uh, portal is? It's, yes, yeah, at the back of the cavern. You can see there's a uh, ledge at the other end of the cavern. Perfect. Uh, Gil will break that <laughs> flute in half. <laughs> what? My flute! It has to be a shard. It's not a bone flute. But my, that's we'll why it. you broke my flute. Well, you broke the law, so I did not. We're even. We're all like, just be like, I, I can fix this. It, it'll be okay. Until <laughs> like afterwards, don't, like I'm. Yeah, yeah don't yeah, fix like, it yet. Not yet. No, but like after, she'll just no. be like, I'll fix this later. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fixed flutes are for winners. <laughs> do we? Uh, can we just walk to the ledge, or do we have to? You have to make to your way across. Um, more of the um, uh, giant bodies and more oh. maggots okay. drop down towards you. Oh no! As you do so, uh, and oh. actually, Gil, can you roll me uh, either a Dex or a Strength saving throw? I would love to. With my okay, I'm gonna use. Good thing I get that plus three because I <laughs> I can already tell that I'm gonna screw this up. So. <laughs> Um, hello, thank you. I'll do strength, and I got a 23. Awesome. You managed to sort of, like, hold on, you've got Mercy's tail in one hand, and yeah. the uh, halfling under the other arm, and you just sort of, like, steady yourself, and Mercy, you, like, jerk down a bit as Gil sort of wobbles as this lava hits him, and then falls <laughs> off. Um, and, uh, Gil, you're going to take two points of damage as it crashes into you. Uh-oh, TK froze again. Oh no! I guess when they unfreeze, we can let them know they took two points of larva damage. <laughs> but not lava. The room is filling with larvae. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's different, it's different. Um, so yeah, you could make your way across to the platform. Um, where Gil will open the, um portal oh 
can, can I can I quickly do something real quick? I apologize ahead of time. I'm gonna like gesture to the halfling under Gil's arm, and I'm gonna be like, just this way. Oh, <laughs> Mercy's mad. Mercy's mad, and she doesn't let you through the portal. No. <laughs> oh. Pintar doesn't get it and thinks that Lyra just cast some spell or something. I don't. <laughs> What? I don't, I don't <laughs> That's funny. Pentar doesn't understand wordplay. <laughs> no, at all, not at all. She's just like, huh? what is going on? No, yeah, that's going to be my contribute contribution to this. Okay, Karen. Okay. Lyra's very proud of herself. She's very mom jokes. <laughs> mom. Hashtag mom jokes. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, and you are able to uh, make your way through the portal and back to Seagull. Great. As we're working our way through Seagull, I assume Gil has to deliver this halfling somewhere. I don't know. But Mercy is lecturing Pentar about her larvae puppet, or puppies and how to care for them. And Mercy's not going to feed them or clean up for them. Pentar has to do that. Was I able to keep them? Um. Roll me a charisma check. No, no. Okay, it's really bad. Eleven. Uh, one has slimy lava puppy has slimed its way. That's totally fine. I, and I'm just like, not even listening to Mercy. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> take the little larva into the basement are we back home now do we make it all yeah the way back yeah gil has sort of like vanished off somewhere to um go and deposit the halfling yeah i take i take him straight into the basement and like feed him decaying flesh and whatnot and i'm like yay mm, delicious way right into your heart oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um at least pentar is happy Say to Lyra upstairs. Oh, actually, as she gets to the door of the kip, um, you see there's a note pinned on the door. There's a note? Mm. I will mage hand grab the note. Do you read? Yes. It says, What ho, my comrades? It's been quite a time finding you, but I thought it'd be worth the effort to let you know. Do you remember the mission you assisted me with against the Takarim? Well, we've finally discovered where those rats hole up on Gehenna. And my knights and I are riding out to crush them like the insects they are. It's a terrible shame you aren't home. I would have loved for you to join us on this glorious quest since you discovered their nefarious plots. Yours, Sir Vimish Crossard. Oh. Ooh. That's interesting. I wish we could have gone. Lyra's just like, I was. Oh, I wish we could have. That's true justice. <laughs> <laughs> And she'll do look around to make sure Gil wasn't catch like up with them? Sorry? Do we think that we could go like catch up with them somehow? You're not sure how long the note has been there. Oh. Okay. But um we are really over time actually, so oh, we need right, to stop cool. for today. So thank you everyone for playing. Um sorry TK vanished. Their uh, internet has they, been a bit yeah, difficult. Interwebs yeah. issues. They're probably restarting and dealing with that yeah they said that it just completely died which i know happens a lot with the provider they have yeah um, um unfortunately uh in the meantime let's uh, go around the rest of you and see what everyone's got going on next week um kayla can stop hi um i'm kayla you can find me on the internet at k-a-y-n-c-l-i and this week on Wednesday, I have Star Trek with Lisa Hadil and our friend Blue Jay, and that's on the Encounter RP channel. And I'm doing a Deep Space Nine adventure, and it's spooky, and we're on episode three, and it's to be good. And also, Holly and I just released a new collection on Trash Witch Coven of embroidered tea, so check that out on etsy.com slash shop slash Trash Witch Coven. And Hadil and I are wrapping up September on Bramblefoot Adventures, which is patreon.com slash Bramblefoot Adventures. And there's other stuff coming in the future. Hooray. Uh, Lisa. I'm Lisa Chen. You can find me on Twitter at MercifulDM. Um, I am going to be in that Star Trek show. Come watch my space grandma uh, live her Deep Space Nine dating sim 
dream. <laughs> There's just a lot of romance in it, actually. I say it's scary, but it's like dancing, ballroom dancing. Romance. Um, but right now, I'm all about raising funds uh, for Extra Life for my local children's hospital. Uh, so look me up on the D&D team roster as Lisa Chen. If you are in Adventurers League, I am giving away thank you gifts of Tressum flying cat familiars. Uh, but also, I just surpassed my goal of 5000 so anyone who donates right now gets entered uh, to uh, win a Chaos Warlock certificate, uh, allowing you to play a class from Xanathar's Lost Notes that I wrote. Uh, so check that out. Cool. Uh, Chloe, hi. Hey, um, I'm Chloe. You can find me on Twitter at Hey It's Chloe, uh, C L O E. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram at Hey It's Chloe Christine. Um, yeah, drop on in, say hi. Um, yeah, I've kind of been in and out of there right now, focusing on a few other things at the moment. But yeah, no, I'm always down for people to come on in and say hi and talk about the show and everything. So yeah. Uh, I'm Mad, I use they them, I've been your dungeon master. Um, our friends at Rivals of Waterdeep were back last Sunday. Hooray! Hey. So good to see they're back on the channel. Um, uh, tomorrow uh, we've got High Rollers coming up with our Idle Champions Link game. Um, I play a lot of Idle Champions, I know a couple of you folks do too. Uh, you can earn dice in the game to uh, give to the players to use in their game. It's uh, sort of like all linked up and stuff and you just earn, earn dice by playing your regular missions. Uh, also tomorrow uh, Greg and Shelley are recording their Dragon Talk podcast and later on we've got Dark and Dicey coming up as well on the channel. Uh, I know lots of people really like that show. Um, we are back next week. We're just about to take a break and we're going to record next week's episode so that we've got it all queued up because I know some of you are busy next week. Um, but we don't want our audience to miss miss out on having their weekly dose of the disaster pals. So, um, yeah, we will see you again next week. But we'll see each other in a few minutes. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone, and see you later. Bye, everyone. And how does this work? No, it's that one. That button. I I still can't work OBS. <laughs> Keep waving. <laughs> <laughs>